Hey everybody, it's me, Zach, this is Judy, and welcome back to our channel. Hey everybody, hi, how's it going? Today we are back once again to review another episode of the 1000 Pound Sisters, the critically acclaimed Emmy Award winning television show, and it's won nothing, but <laughs> TLC is great and they made this great show for us to enjoy. Um, so welcome back to another week of reviewing it here with me. And this week I'm concussion free. <laughs> I'm concussion free. So if you were here last week and you missed it, I did post a little update video about my concussion, but I'm feeling much better for all intents and purposes. I do have to say this week's episode, I don't know, it felt like a little bit of a filler episode. Like they're just trying to get us to the next episode where the exciting stuff is gonna happen. There weren't really like enough fart jokes for my taste or even like shots of little bit. I don't have a little bit shot of the week because quite honestly, there just weren't. There weren't any, <laughs> there were none. So I'm gonna go over the exciting parts of the episode, but before we get to that, I do wanna thank today's sponsors, which is Confessions of a Rebel. Confessions of a Rebel is a fragrance brand that I learned of through Simpered. They initially sent me th this vial of their scent, Get a Room, and it's been one of my favorite scents. I wear it regularly, like when I'm going out and about into the world and I wanna smell nice, I usually grab for that. And they actually sent me a full size version of it today, which I just love because first of all, this is diesel, very heavy, <laughs> very heavy, but it just smells so good. So I'm glad like I'm gonna have supplied to last me. They are all about celebrating the spirit of rebelliousness that's inside of all of us. And one thing that I love about them the most is that a lot of their scents combine scents that are traditionally masculine with scents that are traditionally feminine. A lot of the scents don't really give you strong vibes either way. And as a non-binary person, I love that they're not trying to market just towards like either end of the, the, the binary spectrum, okay? You definitely get scents that uh, give you the traditional vibes of feminine or the traditional vibes of masculine, but it's none of the like hubaloo <laughs> associated with that. They also focus on working with small batch farmers to get all of their ingredients and every single fragrance they have is vegan and cruelty free. So in addition to the full size bottle of Get A Room that they sent me. They also sent me three other vials of fragrance. The first one is About Last Night. It has notes of bergamot, grapefruit, pink pepper, vetiver, white cedar wood. They also sent me Almost Single, which has notes of black pepper, cardamom, iris, clary sage, rosemary, and sandalwood. And then the last one they sent, which is actually my favorite of the new ones that they sent me, is F. Mondays, and it has bergamot, apple, peach skin, clary sage, and sandalwood, and it smells actually so good. I really, I really enjoy it. So if you're interested in trying Confessions of a Rebel, I have a coupon code in the comments, the pinned comments down below and in the description box for you to get 20% off of your order. So please make sure to act now and confess later. Thank you so much to Confessions of a Rebel for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into the review of this week's episode of 1000 Pound Sisters. So like I said, this episode is pretty lackluster. <laughs> It didn't really have any of the drama that the past three episodes have had in any kind of way. And it didn't even really have that much like funny stuff. Like I said, there weren't a lot of fart jokes or anything like that. So it's like, I don't know. It just seemed like they were trying to get to the next, the next thing, which I think is going to be like drama over Tammy gaining weight, which is something we do learn about in this video. So let me just get, get to it. The episode starts off with Gage and Amy and Tammy having a pool day, and by all three of them having a pool day, what they really mean is there's a kiddie pool and Gage is playing in it while Amy and Tammy talk. It was a cute moment, and I did enjoy getting to hear, like, Tammy talk about how much she loves spending time with her nephew. I think that that's great because a lot of people, and I've said this before, but a lot of people think that Tammy is jealous of Gage, and I think really it's more so maybe, if anything, that Tammy is jealous of, like, just the things that Amy has in general, as opposed to like specifically feeling some type of way about her nephew. I think it's clear that she really does actually care about her nephew. And I don't think that she holds ill will towards 
gauge, but there, there always seems to be a contingency of people in my comments that think that Tammy just hates Gage, and I, I don't know, I don't think that that's true. I mean, Gage is really the only human on this show that Tammy hasn't just been downright rude to, so I feel like that has to speak for something. But Amy does inquire about the conversation that Tammy had with Chris and Misty, which was how the last episode ended, and Tammy says that Chris and Misty are just focused on the rumors th about her boyfriend that are online. But girl, these aren't rumors. These aren't rumors. Like, literally, they got this stuff from his TikTok, from your TikTok, from both of y'all's TikToks. One thing that I find interesting is that Amy asks Tammy what she loves about this man, and Tammy's response is everything. What do you like about the guy? Everything. I like the fact that I can call him and talk for hours about nothing, about everything. And I don't know, I just like always feel like it's kind of sus when somebody asks you what you love about your partner. Now granted, they're very early in the relationship, so maybe, maybe it is all love. Maybe it's like, oh my god, every single thing about this person is amazing and incredible and wonderful. But I just like don't fine. I feel like that's not realistic, right? Like, like, I love a lot of things about my partner, but I don't love everything about my partner. Okay, that doesn't mean I hate my partner or anything. It just means that there's, like, th there are things that bug me <laughs> that my partner does sometimes. I also think it's sus because typically, you know, when you first start dating something, you can list specific things that you like about them, right? Like, I could name a list of things that when I first started dating Noel that I could tell you made me attracted to him, made me want to continue dating him, etc. And the fact that Tammy just lumps it all together of like, oh, just everything, everything. To me that says you're not picky. It means that you haven't like spent a lot of time thinking about what you actually like about the person, which I think is something that later in the episode Chris gets into, even Amy talks about it a little bit, that like Tammy's just happy to have anybody interested in her. I think that's evident from the way she answered this question because she can't even say specific things about him. She just likes everything. She likes it. everything about him. They could talk about anything. They could talk about everything, whoever, whatever. The one thing she did get specific about is that she said that he didn't start the conversations off by talking about sex. And I think that that is probably a good thing, but that also kind of feels like the bare minimum when you're looking for somebody in a relationship. There is another moment where Tammy tells Amy that they have discussed marriage. Are y'all planning on getting married or something? Because I've seen lots of true happiness and lots of rings and... But yeah, we have discussed marriage, but we ain't like set on nothing. And I don't know, I feel like that's a little different than the answer that she gave Chris and Misty, which was that they they are no, not getting married whatsoever, whoever, whatever. I mean, it wasn't exactly the same question being asked because Chris and Misty asked, are you engaged? And Amy asked like, are you thinking about marriage? Is marriage on the table? So they are a little bit different questions, but certainly Tammy didn't tell Chris and Misty that they were having conversations about maybe getting married one day. And I would say overall from this conversation, I just agree with, with Amy. She's thinking with her cooter and not her brain. <laughs> That's that. The only other thing that came out of this particular scene is that we find out that Amy is still running a lot of errands and doing a lot of things for Tammy. Tisa's coming like twice a week, so there's still five other days. <laughs> five other days of the week where Amy has to help Tammy out and... I think that that's important because it's gonna come up later in the episode as well. So our next scene is just like a filler scene of Chris in the kitchen, maybe meal prepping, talking about food in some kind of way, <laughs> but not really. It seems like they just wanted to give him something to do while talking to Brittany about what's going on with Tammy. He's still worried about the BBW King because he found out that the BBW King throws parties for plus size women, BBWs, and he thinks that really Philip is just trying to be out here getting clout and attention from Tammy's followers because Tammy does have a lot of followers, especially on TikTok where the BBW King posts a lot of content, but also just in general because she has a TLC show, she has a YouTube channel, and thus a following of people. And so Chris thinks that he's just trying to capitalize on that to help grow his business, to help grow his platform 
platform. Now, one thing that has come up a lot, and I, I referenced it already, but in my comments, a lot of people have always said that they felt like Tammy's just jealous of the things that Amy has. I've never been 100% sure on that. If anything, I think Tammy is jealous of Amy being in a relationship, but this is what Chris had to say about all of it. I truly believe that Amy's starting to have what Tammy wants in life, and she's somewhat jealous. So she's either going to choose get healthy and live longer, or stay fat and be happy in a relationship. And I can definitely see that. I definitely think that Tammy would love to have like a, a partner. It seems to be something that she prioritizes over literally everything else in her life. Like she was clearly doing very good with rehab and then she left and now she's dating this man and now she's not being successful anymore. So it's clear that she prioritizes being in some kind of relationship. I don't know that that's entirely 100% all the issues she has with Amy, or at least the reason for the issues she has with Amy, but I do see how that could be part of it. She sees that Amy's out here like living her life, living her truth, and that Tammy is not Amy's top priority. And I think that anybody, I think that Tammy's issues with anybody is when Tammy's not the number one priority, right? So I think it's, possible there is some jealousy there and I know a lot of y'all are 100% in agreement with Chris about Tammy being jealous of Amy. The next scene we get is Tisa back to Tammy and this is a key example of why I think this episode is just filler because we got previews for next week's episode where it looks like Tisa and Tammy are gonna go to blows and this is just like this is just like the, the water is simmering here, okay? It's simmering and I think it's gonna come to a boil next week. But Tisa comes to check in on Tammy and Tammy's like, ooh, look at my bathing suit. I got this bathing suit. We're gonna go to the pool someday. It's gonna be great. And then Tisa's like, okay, well girl, if we're gonna get to the pool, you gotta get up and walk. So are we gonna walk? <laughs> and Tammy's like, no. I'm not walking, you don't understand my pain issues. And basically, Tammy just like shuts down and she starts being real shitty towards Tisa. If you think that you can't do it, I'm thinking that you can. And I know you can. What are you gonna do if we go to the swimming pool? You gonna have to get out and walk. We might as well prepare ourselves for that walk now, huh? The pool. F the pool. Which honestly, I feel like it was just a matter of time before Tisa got the the same energy from Tammy that Tammy gives to everybody else in her life. Once Tisa decided to start like being like, hey, we gotta get serious about this. I appreciate Tisa. Like she handles things real well, real smoothly. I think that she, because she's acting in a professional role, is able to not emotionally react the way that Tammy's siblings emotionally react to Tammy when Tammy is a mess. I'm curious about where it's gonna go from here because <laughs> there is like a confessional where the producers are asking Tammy like how she felt about Tisa that day and she like full on said that she was gonna like cuss Tisa out and that Tisa was <laughs> lucky to not get cussed out for the day. So I guess we'll see where that goes moving forward. Uh, like I said, the previews for next week look a little spicy with Tisa. It looks like Tisa's gonna get a little upset with Tammy and I look forward to seeing it because Tammy needs to hear this from somebody that's not just like her family members. Like she needs to know that this isn't just some issue that her family members have with her, but like literally everybody, 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 everybody. That, that's just, it's just everybody. One of the funnier moments or really the only funny moment of the episode is that Amy and Tammy sit down to do a YouTube video again you know, you gotta, you gotta just ignore the fact that we have never seen this YouTube video posted on their actual YouTube channel, you know, so, so ignore that. But they do this video where they try out wigs and the funniest thing about the, the scene that we're seeing here is nothing to do with anything that Amy and Tammy are necessarily doing and everything to do with the way that TLC decided to edit <laughs> this clip. They can make you look attractive. I am from the planet Mars. They can make you sens sensual. I'm going to the mall and going shopping. Is that how you say that word? Sensual. Sensual. 
Like they full on zoomed in on Tammy's face while Amy was saying, they just can't change your face. We could do a lot for your looks. They just can't change your ugly face. Now TLC, tell me you're not being shady as fuck. <laughs> tell me you're not being shady as fuck with all of that. It's also fun to think about these moments, but then you remember that literally the last thing we talked about was Tammy being shitty to Tisa, and I'm like, I don't know, is this funny? Are these wigs funny? I don't know today. I don't know. I'm I'm having a real hard time finding it funny because uh, shit's just not funny when it's when it's in a Tammy being shitty sandwich. So after this, the editing gets kind of weird because it's clear that they filmed two separate things, but they wanted to make it last for the whole episode. So like they keep, keep going back and forth between Chris and Tammy going to the hospital and, or not the hospital, but to see Dr. Smith for their next appointment. And then Amy and Michael hiring some professional organizers to come help clean and organize their home. And even though this is not how it happened on the actual show, I think what I'm gonna do is focus on Chris and Tammy going to the doctor, and then I'm also going to spend time focusing on Amy and Michael cleaning their home. And I'm not gonna go back and forth because I think for the purposes of what we're doing, that's gonna be confusing, but that's what they did in the episode, and I also thought that was confusing. <laughs> So Chris, Brittany, and Tammy, uh, Brittany is Chris's wife if I haven't reiterated that already, but they all three get into a van and get on their way to go see Dr. Smith for a follow-up appointment. I will say Chris seems pretty defeated on the way there, both about his own chances of like getting weight loss surgery, but also in like dealing with anything related to Tammy. He full on is like, I want to bring up shit to her because I'm worried that if I say the wrong thing, she won't even get in this van and go see the doctor. And like, we need her <laughs> at the doctor because we need her to hear this shit from the doctor as well. They do briefly talk about Tammy's success or lack of success in the car on the way there. And Tammy, <laughs> Tammy's so good at like, contradicting herself, uh, realizing while she's talking that she's telling a lie. So she talks about how she's doing well and then she ruins it within like seconds of her saying that. I'm doing fairly well, my opinion. I'm not gonna lie, I had cheat day yesterday. What'd you eat? Two slices of pizza. I had a, a cheeseburger, bacon cheeseburger the other day. And this does come up again later, so just make sure to keep in mind, like, Tammy had a cheat day. Who's helping her out with this cheat day? And when I say cheat day, I mean cheat days, plural, because she said she had two. So Chris is the first one to meet with Dr. Smith. He was 412 pounds when he weighed in at Tammy's a couple episodes ago, if you don't remember that. And he weighs in again with Dr. Smith, and he's now at 414 pounds. Um, so he actually gained two pounds since then, which is interesting because we've also been shown clips of him doing the, like, redneck hillbilly CrossFit and of him, like, allegedly eating correctly. And, you know, who knows what happened, and he is still recovering from, like, a major surgery. So so maybe that's part of it. Who knows? But Dr. Smith does say, listen, you have been nothing but a great patient before this. So if you can get below 400 pounds, then in three to four weeks, we're going to set you up and get you scheduled for some weight loss surgery, which if you remember like the super trailer for season three, they did show Chris getting some kind of surgery. So I'm going to guess that he probably does end up getting that surgery unless it's like for some other health related issue that comes up. I, I feel like that's probably what it's gonna be. So Tammy goes next and she was 634 pounds after rehab, like when she left rehab. And then she was 624 a week later when she weighed in at the same time Chris weighed in a couple episodes ago. And Tammy sits down, talks to Dr. Smith. One of the things I'll know is she like listed a laundry list of physical activity that she was doing when she was at the rehab, which obviously I think is great, but I think like really shows the juxtaposition of now she won't even do the most basic stuff when it comes to working with Tisa. So it's like wild to me that she was getting up and doing all of those things at rehab and then she just like shut down and said, nope, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Not even the most basic of things. I'm not doing it. She gets on, she weighs in and she's at 639, which is more than she was when she left rehab. I think she was only like five more pounds than she was 
when she left rehab, but that means that she had gained a significant amount of weight since the second weigh-in when she weighed in a couple episodes with Chris. I don't know, this is like all hard to watch, especially knowing what we know has happened in real life with her health. Again, I'll leave that linked somewhere in the iCards or a pinned comment down below, but we, we know that Tammy has experienced a lot of issues and Dr. Smith even reminds her in this episode like, hey, you are at a high risk for having like a cardiac event, a pulmonary event, you already have kidney issues that we know about, like you are at risk of so many things going wrong, like y you need to do something about this. And he kind of asks her like, yo, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> what are you doing when it comes to eating? Because you say, you say you're not really working out, but you've been focusing on eating the right things, so what are you doing? And she claims that she's cut out all the carbs, all the, all the bad food, she's only eating veggies and fruit and, and meat. And and Chris very, very rightfully says, uh, girl, on the way here, on the way here, you said something different. On the way up here, you told me you had a cheat day. Who brought you that? Amy. Was it a cheat day where you asked her, said, hey, Amy, will you go get me this? I didn't want it to eat lunch meat. I'm kind of getting tired of it. And Tammy's like, well, I just don't want to eat lunch meat anymore. As though lunch meat's the only thing she could be eating. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand. This is why I don't understand is like, how do you get into this mindset that like you're trying to lose weight and the only way you can lose weight is to eat lunch meat? I don't know. Maybe that, maybe that comment was taken out of context on TLC's end, but I just like didn't understand it. And this whole scene kind of ends with Dr. Smith saying like, listen, you clearly need to like, see a therapist, we need to get that addressed. Like it's clearly something that is, is keeping you from being able to overcome your food addiction, like please do it. And if you don't remember in season two, there was a moment where Tammy and Amy together went to a therapist. And I think really the issue with the therapist at that time was that really they needed to probably just do some individual therapy because you couldn't even get to the root of either one of their individual problems without them like fighting with each other. And I think like, Again, they all need to focus on themselves, <laughs> and I think that goes for therapy as well. Like, Tammy needs to be able to, like, comfortably confide in a therapist and talk about it. Now, she claims that she doesn't want to open up to people, I, which I think is, is interesting because she is talking about all of these stuff, all of these things <laughs> on, on a public national television show and also, like, talks about these things on social media and stuff as well. So, like, I'm a little confused about that, but I do understand that it's hard for anybody to open up and be vulnerable and there's probably things that she hasn't shared on television that are probably eating at like the real true root of the problem. And so I'm sure confronting all of that with somebody is very difficult and it's probably easier to just like push it back and eat food to deal with your emotions. So yeah, that was about it. It seems like she's gonna maybe try therapy to try and make some kind of difference. So I hope we get to see some of that. I hope we get to see her trying out there because I don't think that therapy is a fix all by any means, but it's definitely a helpful tool in like resolving some problems. And like a lot of people don't have the luxury of having access to therapy. And so if she can get that through this show, like I would love that for her. I hope it works. I hope it helps her. Um, and I hope she can use it as a tool to like cope with her mental health and then also work on other aspects of her health. So the other part of this episode is Amy and Michael working with a home organizer to clean up their home, organize their home. Uh, mostly Amy talks about how she feels bad that like Gage is living in this home. She says she doesn't feel like she has a lot of time to focus on keeping a clean house because she is taking care of a baby, is taking care of Tammy, is doing all of these things and she just really wants to like handle this before things get too bad. And I have to say that, that this does combine a lot of my personal interests when it comes to reality television. If you didn't know, I'm a big fan of Hoarders. I frequently reference Dr. Robin Zazio whenever I, I do videos or make videos here on YouTube about a variety of things. So I do love the TV show Hoarders and obviously I love the 1000 Pound Sisters. I enjoy talking about 1000 Pound Sisters. And so I was really Really looking forward to this but I will say I appreciate how vulnerable 
Amy is throughout all of this. It's clear that she wants to make a change and be better for her kid. And I have to say, they show lots of shots of her home and it, it it's clear that there, there are challenges when it comes to cleanliness, organization, and clutter. I really know that in the past that I have been judgmental, okay? So I will say that. I also know what it's like to live in clutter and things like that. And I, I have struggled with just clutter in general in my life, both like in previous living situations I've been in and just like living on my own, like, I get it, I get it. So I'm gonna do my best, especially because Amy was so vulnerable in this episode and not passing judgment on, on things because I think the key takeaway from this is that like, Amy does feel bad about it, Amy isn't happy with it, and Amy is like trying to make a change in her life for for her family's betterment. So when the organizers get there, Amy does ask like, what do you think? How bad is it on a scale of one to ten? And honestly, they, in the most polite way, like truly refuse to answer. On a scale of one to ten, how bad is it in here? Um, okay. Okay. It's hard to say. We try not to judge. I guess it's a matter of, I think it's bad. And I think that's because they're trying to approach it from a place of non-judgment because their job isn't to come in and judge her. Their job is to like come in and help clean things up. And Amy talks about her mom and her grandma being hoarders. And I think that that's something that you see even on the TV show happen a lot where like the intergenerational family like trauma of hoarding <laughs> and how people take that on and like do it if like other people in their family have also been hoarders. They do show evidence of there being rodents and pests like bugs, mice, whoever, whatever, including this clip of Amy finding a dead mouse. Is that a mouse? Which, like, yikes, there's just a dead mouse in one of your cabinets. That's, uh, like, I don't know if you've ever, listen, I used to live on a farm. I, I was not a farmer, but my family did rent a house that was, like, on some farmland from the time I was in, like, kindergarten to sixth grade. Because we lived next to fields, like, we did occasionally get mice in our homes as well. That's something, actually, that I believe Amy says in this episode. Like, we live next to a field, so sometimes the field mice come in. There were times I remember mice being in our, in our home, but also, like, we had mouse traps and things like that. And when a mouse died, you could smell it. <laughs> and so I'm just thinking like, how long has this been here that you didn't notice that and like didn't do anything about it? But after the m mouse thing happened, Amy did have like a whole breakdown because she feels embarrassed that people are in our home and are seeing that. And Michael tries to say it's fine because everybody has this problem. But I mean, like realistically, not everybody has this problem. And that's not, that's not a judgment call or anything. I'm just saying like, most people I don't think live like this. There are people that live like that, but he's just trying his best to like calm her down, which I do appreciate. And he even like tries to rationalize and like recenter the energy to say like, listen, if we can, if we can just focus on getting things clean now, then after this, it's just a matter of keeping it clean. Like this is a, a big task to get all of this clean and organized now, but like once it is, it's gonna be so much easier to maintain. So the next part th it, that is actually kind of rough for me, for me personally, just because I think I need to like take some accountability and things is Amy opens up about how YouTube dogged on her for having bugs in her videos in the past. In particular, they show a clip with her making this peanut butter fudge and the, the bug crawling across the lens of the camera. And I, one of my most popular videos when it comes to the Slayton sisters <laughs> is me reacting to that video. And I have to say, like, at the time of watching it, I, I would not change what my reaction was. I was shocked because I was watching a video about making food and there's clearly the, the bug crawling across the camera and the background on the stove, there's a bug. With that being said, I don't think I was like overly mean or cruel in that video. I do, I do apologize if I contributed to the way that Amy felt. I know I was not the only person commenting at the time. I know there are a lot of people that felt some type of way, but it's clear that Amy 
felt some kind of way from the way that the internet responded to that and I do apologize if I contributed to any of that. I sent that in a message privately to Amy as well. I do talk to Amy and Tammy both somewhat regularly, <laughs> so I think things are probably fine with us, but I just wanted to publicly say that too, like especially having more information. It's always okay to change your feelings about how you acted or reacted or what your behavior was in the past, and I certainly wouldn't want to contribute to anybody feeling like bad about themselves. I also have to say that I think things are different now that she, you know, has TLC's resources. I'm glad that she is taking time to address these issues that she's having in her home. And it's clear that she wants to make a space that is conducive to Gage growing up healthy and happy and that she doesn't want to repeat some of the behaviors that, you know, led to her getting to that place, you know, because of how she was raised. And I think that that's like all you can really ask for people. Everybody's in a different place, but it's clear that she wants to do better and is trying to do better. And I'm glad she's making use of TLC's resources. Although I'm sure like, I'm sure the people of TLC who are in their film filming every day and doing all of that are probably like, listen, can we get somebody to come in here and like clean some stuff up? Because I'm sure that they don't love being in that situation either. And that's one thing I've consistently appreciated about Amy on this show is that clear she wants to change her situation. She wants to make her life better. She wants to make her family's life better, whether that's Michael and Gage or even for Tammy. And I, I just genuinely appreciate that. You know, it's clear that she's had some troubles and things like that in her life and not great experiences. And I feel like the one reason that people tend to gravitate more towards Amy than they do Tammy is that Amy's response to all of this like negative trauma and experiences that she's had growing up is like, I didn't like that and I want to change my situation. Whereas like Tammy is like still dealing with that in a, in a very negative way. And I think that's one thing I want to bring up because I do remember there was like one person that commented, it might've been an episode or two ago, they commented and they were like, Zach, like you keep bringing up that like Tammy had all of these bad experiences growing up and is like a human and she's complicated, but so is Amy. And like Amy's not treating people poorly. And I'm like, yeah, that's true. But also people respond to trauma differently, right? Everybody responds to bad things that happen to them, even if it's the exact same bad thing. Their response to how they handle and deal with that is different. And also like, even though they experience some of the same things, they're also still two individual unique people, right? And so I do get that people are much more inclined to gravitate towards Amy because Amy is saying, look at all this trauma I've experienced. Look at how I grew up with hoarders. How am I gonna change that? How am I gonna make it better? And it is frustrating to watch that juxtaposition between her and Tammy when Tammy's like, I've had all this bad shit happen to me and I'm I'm just gonna continue to make it worse and, and react in anger and things like that. So I get it. I do understand why people are frustrated with Tammy. But I think I think that that's they're both complex humans. They're both complicated people. I mean we all are in our own ways, but Amy and Tammy in particular, so I don't know. I still love them. This episode was kind of boring, though, I will say. Outside of the, the, like, hoarding thing, like, it was more of the same. I mean, we knew that, we knew Tammy and Chris were going to go to the doctor. They were both going to gain weight. <laughs> like, like, there was nothing surprising about that. So, it was, it was a rough episode for me, I gotta say. But I am looking forward to next week, and I hope you all are as well. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I just want to thank Confessions of a Rebel once again for sponsoring today's video. Uh, if this is your first time on my channel, I hope you'll consider subscribing down below and clicking the bell button so you get notifications every single time I post a new video. Please leave me a comment with your thoughts about the episode. Hit like, click share, and follow me on all of my social media. I had so much fun today. I hope you did too, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!